Let me give you the shocking headline, folks. There are at least four ways to hijack your phone through a back door. I feel helpless because there's nothing I can do about it except to turn off the phone or get a phone with a hardware switch like a Librem 5. I will talk only about attacks specific to the cell baseband modem. These attacks are not particular to iOS or Android, nor is this a discussion of internet attacks. Let's learn what these backdoors are. This video will be in two parts, so make sure to watch part two. Let's talk about what some of these attacks can do that we are aware of. Someone can turn on your phone and listen to you. Someone can read your texts or receive copies of your texts. Someone can send text messages in your name. Someone can listen to your phone conversations. Someone can call overseas on your dime. Someone can track your locations. Someone can obtain your unique phone identifiers like the IMZ or IMEI. Someone can determine who you are talking to or texting with. Someone can blackmail you with apparent calls and texts that you didn't actually send. Someone can hack your internet accounts with two-factor authentication. Now, this is the part that hasn't been discussed anywhere, but it's possible. Someone could read the data of other apps on your phone or in theory could load state-sanctioned malware since the baseband modem shares the same memory space with the phone operating system. Has any of this scared you yet? We are led to believe that Apple and Google are taking pains to make sure that our phones are secure with terms like secure enclave, encryption, biometric login, Yet these backdoor attacks skirt around that. Each of us, it's a possible target of surveillance. Now the word surveillance is very specific. It is not a term we use for hackers. Usually it is a nation state action. Most of the backdoors I will talk about are likely initiated by three letter agencies. And I hope that it is not used for mass surveillance and mass data collection. Likely it is though. But it is disturbing because we all buy these mobile devices with some expectation of privacy that apparently does not exist. As I've talked about incessantly in other videos, your cell baseband chip, typically made by Qualcomm on US phones, is a full computer. It is sold as an SOC or system on a chip. This means it has its own CPU and input and output capabilities. It also has an updatable firmware or programming for the hardware flash memory. The firmware updates can be sent through the air and those with iPhones will sometimes see this firmware update as a carrier update. I'm sure you've seen some of those. In addition, as it turns out, the cell baseband can respond to commands on the airwaves which are then received by the modems just like a website and the baseband will respond back like a website. Some of these instructions are stored on the SIM card, which can also be written to by the carrier. To be clear, the baseband chip is a black box. Most of the patents for that chip are controlled by Qualcomm and MediaTek and are completely proprietary. Now, with this basic background, let me explain what these four backdoor attacks are to the cell baseband modem. Most are not new, but have been forgotten. Later on in part two, I will discuss some of the real world implications of some of these attacks that we have to be aware of and how we might protect ourselves from it. The number one backdoor is Simjacker. Simjacker is a new attack that was discovered recently. Now, this one is heavily in the news right now, and as each day passes, we learn that just about every single phone is vulnerable. The way this attack works is by sending commands to your phone as silent SMS or silent text messages. A silent text means your phone does not acknowledge receiving the text 
and it actually circumvents the operating system and it goes directly to the baseband modem. The SMS just has to be crafted in a particular way so that the system will recognize it as a command. The phone will answer the secret text message back, kind of like a website. So the outside party can then initiate a command and control conversation with the phone that basically allows that party to take over the phone. This backdoor was discovered by Adaptive Mobile Security and they have a website dedicated to this attack. It's called simjacker.com. So if you're a security analyst, you can read it up on there. Now, what is interesting about the research done by Adaptive Mobile is that they make this statement. We are quite confident that this exploit has been developed by a specific private company that works with governments to monitor individuals. You will find a pattern here later on, but almost all the attacks I will mention today require having inside information on the operation of the baseband modem. Was this done in cahoots with Qualcomm and MediaTek? Do we have a supply chain problem with the insertion of malware at the hardware level? Or did some rogue engineer share the inside information about how to control these modems? Now, this particular attack is tied to the SIM card. The SIM card itself apparently keeps the website instructions that control the baseband chip. So it could also imply that the SIM card makers are involved. One of the biggest manufacturers of SIM cards is Gemalto, which by the way has plenty of government contracts, including providing the RFID chips used in US passport. As a person knowledgeable about programming, I would agree with the assessment by adaptive mobile security that this kind of intense infrastructure would have to be done by state-sponsored contractors. They likely have access to inside information that the rest of us don't. An example of this is the backdoor to the Intel chip called IME, Intel Management Engine. That's another proprietary framework. Hackers can only guess at how to control it by trial and error. And they have proven that there are some hacks to them. But someone with access to the Intel software can manipulate and control most Intel computers. In summary, it is my reasonable guess that this is a state-sponsored surveillance attack that can be used against any phone in existence. And this could include older phones like flip phones or even a Linux phone like a Librem 5. However, this attack cannot take place when the power is off or if a hardware switch disables the baseband modem as you can do on a Librem 5. So as an example, on a Librem 5, you can turn off the baseband when you're going to a meeting or having a particularly private conversation. So you at least have an option. Number two, the number two backdoor is signaling system number seven, SS7. I wonder how the SS7 attack can be forgotten just because new attacks became known. SS7 is a telephony signaling protocol used by cell phones since the 70s. It's basically a pathway in a worldwide phone network that allows a carrier to discover a phone's location, route messages and texts, and speech, and send commands to the phone. Before SS7, commands such as routing of a call was done by sending tones on with the same channel as your call. But this was easily hacked. Back then a device called a blue box could send tones that could hack the phone network. Because this was easily hacked, the telephone industry created a second channel separate from speech that controlled the metadata and routing of the call. Today, the SS7 data is transported over the internet and that's how it's intercepted as well. It's very similar to the SimJacker attack because it can also take over your phone, read your texts, send messages in your name, and so on. Edward Snowden revealed to us that SS7 was in fact used by the NSA to spy on phones. 60 Minutes had a program some years back that described a full SS7 hack and it's scary stuff. What is different with SS7 compared to SimJacker is that this attack has to happen on the cell network. 
in the security for detecting rogue SS7 instructions is provided by each carrier. So we don't know how well each carrier has created detection tools to spot these kinds of attacks. This attacks requires access to the SS7 software. Since this is all standardized now, it should be an easy matter for any nation state to get the SS7 software and spy on their citizens. In theory, it can also be used by hackers. Again, this kind of attack is an active surveillance kind of attack. It does not appear to be a mass surveillance tool. Although I wouldn't put it past three-letter agencies to record all the metadata occurring on SS7. The SS7 attack is unique because it targets the routing side. In other words, a call or text can be rerouted to the attacker's device. An example of how this could be used is in intercepting two-factor authentication. Let's say an attacker wants to hack your Google account. Google will send you a text message with a security code if you want to change your password. That security code can be intercepted by an SS7 attack, so the attacker can basically change your password. So, this attack can foil security based on SMS or texting as a second factor. Later on, I will discuss how to defend against this. This will be in the part 2 video. Since SS7 is a protocol used by all telephony providers, there is no single place to control any rogue SS7 attacks. So it is unclear how much protection our cell carriers provide to prevent this attack. If anything, this attack is even more well known since it's been publicized so much. However, because of the identifiers used to do this hack, this is likely going to be used by nation states. This is not easily done by regular hackers. Now what's interesting here is that since this attack can involve rerouting traffic to another device, the original target phone need not be on. So you're not protected from this even with a hardware switch. And this attack is specific to telephony features such as speech calls and SMS. Fortunately, it does not affect iMessage on iOS. I will continue the back doors in part 2 of the video. In part 2, I will also discuss how to mitigate the vulnerabilities from these back doors. For example, to prevent someone from hijacking your apps on the internet. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you subscribe to the channel so you get alerted on new videos like part two of the series on Phone Backdoor. Mm -hmm.